Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. And this video marks a new section in the series on PDE. We're going to look at second order PDE with uh, constant coefficients and we're going to classify and um, discover how to form general solutions to these problems. Okay, so we'll concentrate on second order linear PDE. We're going to discover how to classify and uh, build general solutions to them. The methods include factorization and change of coordinates. And one motivation for um, classifying types of PDEs is that uh, classes of PDEs share common features, even if the equations can look quite different. And um, in other videos, I'll give a more tr uh, detailed treatment of the most important equations together with you know, boundary conditions or initial conditions and things of this nature. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the focus on today's presentation is on this special equation known as a wave equation. Now you can here see is a constant. You can see that the only derivatives in the PDE are second order. So it's purely second order. There's no mixed derivatives, but um, the ideas that we'll look at today can be uh, can incorporate those mixed derivatives. And I'm going to show you a technique called the factorization technique or the method of factoring. Okay, essentially what we're going to do is break this second order problem down to a system of two first order PDEs, which we know how to solve uh, from previous presentations. Okay, so if we define an operator big L just by this, so just move that to the other side, then the PDE 1 becomes just compactly written as L of u equals 0. What we're going to do is factor this operator L so that we obtain two first order um, linear partial differential equations, which we know how to solve. Okay, now observe that L can be factored into these, uh, th this sort of form. Okay, so let, let me talk, talk uh, a bit about that. Firstly, if you expand these brackets, okay, so essentially, you know, compute du dt and then c times du dx and then apply the, the derivatives from this bracket to, to what you have here, you'll verify that you'll get this. Okay, so just as an exercise, you can verify it. Okay, so uh, essentially begin with a function u, compute these derivatives, let the result be v, and then compute this, and you should get 0 for L u equals 0. Now, sometimes when you look at this, you go, well, how did you get that? Well, there's a couple of ways. Let me just sort of basically forget about the c squared here. Let's just make c equal 1, okay? So let me just show you some of the thoughts that go into coming up with a factorization like this or similar to this. Okay, let's con consider that. Now, think of the subscripts as being squares. Okay, so sort of abusing the no notation. Let's think of, I've got a TT here, let's think of that as, say, A squared. I've got an XX here, let's think of that as B squared. Now, just using simple algebra, I can factor that. And if you sort of think of these as these operators, then you'll get to the factorization. Okay, so that, that's pretty simple. Another way of coming up with a factorization which is, which is going to be useful is to um, play around with this by uh, perhaps adding a term and subtracting a term. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, again, for simplicity, let's just make c equals 1. Okay, what I'm going to do is add in a mixed derivative term and take away a mixed derivative term. Let me show you what I mean.
Okay. Now, in this course, we are assuming that all the partial derivatives, the mixed partial derivatives, commute. Okay. So I can actually rewrite this if I switch those around. Uh, sorry, if I switch those around, the x t to a t x, I can come out with the following. Oops, sorry. That is a plus there. Okay, and if I let v be what's in here, then essentially I get v sub t minus v sub x. Okay? So you're breaking it down from a second order problem to two first order problems. So that's a couple of ways to factorise, okay? And let me just, you know, this and this are the same, and that's important. Okay, so if I make these factorizations, so if I let say v equal u sub t plus c u x, so in this case you let v be in that bracket with c equals 1, v in that bracket c equals 1, then you'll get 2 first order problems, which we know how to solve, okay, from earlier uh, lessons. Okay, so let's solve three first. Three is a first order homogeneous PDE, linear PDE. Four is a first order inhomogeneous PDE. So you can solve three by um, a number of different ways. It's a transport equation, so you can solve it using those methods, or you can use the method of characteristics. For an arbitrary fun a differentiable function j, such that j of x equals v of x comma naught, this is the solution to three. Take that, put it in here, and solve that uh, inhomogeneous problem. Okay. Okay, so you can solve five a number of different ways. You can solve, so, so this, so three was a transport e equation, a homogeneous one. Five is an inhomogeneous transport equation. You can solve five a number of different ways. You can solve it using the method of characteristics, or you can use the integral representation that I've talked about in previous videos. Okay, and that's exactly the, the way that I've done it. Okay, so um, here you just apply the integral formula from previous videos, and you can see j is just a function of one variable, so you don't have to worry about a, you know, a comma s in here, as we did in previous videos. And you just want to integrate this with respect to s. By the way, here uh, H <clears throat> H is just a function such that u of x comma zero equals H of x. Okay, I haven't written that down. All right. Okay, so if you go through here, we define big G prime to be little j, and you can sub these in and just introduce some new functions f and g to make things a little a little prettier. Okay, so g would be that minus big G of that on 2c, and f would just be 1 on 2c times big G of that. Okay, so what do we have here? We now have a general solution to our special equation known as the wave equation. Okay? Here f and g are arbitrary but differentiable functions. Okay? Now, if you if you want to verify that this actually does satisfy this problem well, use the chain rule, differentiate to find u sub tt and u sub xx and you'll you'll see that this really does satisfy um, the Uh, PDE that we've been looking at. Okay? Okay. So, let's just have a look at this form for a, for a second. If we're going to solve more general problems, okay, and in fact, we're going to, in other videos, I'll show you how to solve this more general problem here where you have where A, B, and C are constants, and you have a, possibly a mixed derivative. Here we've kind of got a sum involving a special, you know, apparently a special form in the argument. 
Okay, what we're going to do to solve these more general problems is to kind of copy this, if you've got the x and y subscripts rather than x and t's, we're going to look for solutions of this form, f of mx plus y or f of x plus my, where m's a constant to be determined. Okay, so our, um, our method's going to be a lot quicker than this, but this is just sort of laying the foundations to give you the in intuition to solve a whole range of problems. So in the next video, I'll discuss this more general problem and we'll relate it back to the ideas in the wave equation. Um, usually the wave equation is coupled with some extra information, boundary conditions or initial conditions. So this is just a general, a general form of solution which you would have to refine in case uh, you were given extra conditions like boundary conditions. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. I hope you can join me for that presentation.